one hit wash up, hot, then not. And we now pronounce you both Taylor Lautner, werewolf to where is he now, here's why this star's eyeing something bigger than Hollywood. The first order of business here is to address the vampire elephant in the room, Twilight, because although Lautner's co-stars Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson have distanced themselves from the series, Tay hasn't been as lucky. Case in point, the internet went into Twilight reunion freakout mode when Stewart showed up to Lautner's birthday party in 2019. I'd blame it on the whole inner animal thing, but it was really just me. Clearly, Lautner is still very much attached to the franchise whether he likes it or not, even though it wrapped back in 2012. And to be honest, we can understand why movie execs might be hesitant to give Lautner a shot considering he hasn't done much to shed the character of Jacob. His most popular work to date is still Twilight. When Twilight hit theaters in the fall of 2008, Lautner, Stewart, and Pattinson instantly became household names and the hottest young actors in Hollywood. During the four-year run of the franchise, Stewart and Pattinson were looking toward their future and immersing themselves in roles that proved their range. Stewart starred in the indie flicks Adventureland and The Runaways, while Pattinson tried his hand at romantic leading man in Water for Elephants and Remember Me before switching gears toward arthouse projects. Lautner, on the other hand, landed only a bit part in the 2010 ensemble romantic comedy Valentine's Day and Abduction between Twilight installments. Three years after Breaking Dawn Part 2 hit the big screen, there was already talk of Lautner's potential one-hit wonder status. As one agent told The Hollywood Reporter in 2015, it's not easy to move out of the shadow of a hit like Twilight, but he's still very young. There's time for Taylor to become more than just Jacob. Lautner got his first shot at the lead in the 2011 romantic action thriller Abduction. With legendary director John Singleton at the helm and an amazing supporting cast that featured Sigourney Weaver, Alfred Molina, and Jason Isaacs, the stage was set for the teen idol to become Hollywood's new action hero. Spoiler alert, it didn't happen. I'm gonna slow down just enough for you to jump out. Apparently, audiences weren't too keen on seeing a Lautner film if he wasn't going to transform into a werewolf at some point, and the movie bombed at the box office, grossing only $28 million domestically. Against its $35 million budget, Abduction was universally panned by critics and currently sits at 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. The only saving grace for Lautner was that a few critics didn't blame the flop on him. As one critic wrote for The Telegraph, when Taylor Lautner is the least of a movie's problems, be afraid. It wasn't exactly a thumbs up, but the studios weren't brushing off this twihard bait just yet. Someone still thought Lautner was a big enough office draw to land him the 2015 romantic action thriller Tracers. He played a bike messenger who discovers parkour and a girl while being chased by the Chinese mafia. But Lautner's American fans didn't get to see the film unless they were in a theater on May 10, 2015. It would be the only day of the U.S. theatrical release, where it raked in a measly $2,000. Internationally, Tracers brought in $3.3 million, and the reviews were also bad. The film currently holds a combined 24% on Rotten Tomatoes with a reviewer reporting for the Toronto Sun, at the end of Twilight, poor shirtless werewolf Jacob didn't manage to get the girl, and if he's not careful, Taylor Lautner isn't going to get a career either. With that, Lautner's run as a leading man shapeshifted into Toast. Not to dredge up old drama, but we can't help but mention a 2011 allegation surrounding Taylor's dad, Daniel Lautner. Taylor was supposedly let go by his high-profile publicist, Robin Baum, after three months because of his father's alleged antics. As The Hollywood Reporter reported, word is his father, Daniel Lautner, isn't the easiest guy to work with. You're leaving me all alone. You're gonna be all right. Sorry, son. If Daniel did act out of line, it's possible he has since changed his tune. But even so, Hollywood doesn't easily forget. Need proof? Just ask Grey's Anatomy alum Katherine Heigl, whose reputation took a hit after she and momager Nancy Heigl reportedly frustrated stakeholders with their so-called difficult behavior. After coming off one of the most successful film franchises in movie history, we can't blame Lautner's reps for swinging for the fences when negotiating his salaries post-Twilight. One studio exec told Vulture, William Morris has done a brilliant job of convincing Hollywood that he's the next big movie star. And that's all reflected in the numbers. Lautner got $5 million for abduction and was set to take home $7.5 million for the live-action feature about the action figure Stretch Armstrong. Another source told the outlet, I remember when Universal co-chairman Donna Langley cast him in 
Stretch Armstrong. She said to me, he's the real deal. And I thought, based on what? Based on Twilight? Another studio marketing exec added, abduction is like selling Tobey Maguire and anything outside of Spider-Man. If I were sitting on top of Stretch Armstrong now, I'd be terrified. The rap then reported that Lautner dropped out of Stretch Armstrong because of scheduling conflicts. Lautner wasn't being offered $7.5 million anywhere else, so we assumed this was a convenient excuse for both parties to save face. While Jason Statham and The Rock won't be winning an Oscar anytime soon, their movies are pure entertainment, action, screen presence, and charisma. And according to critics, Lautner has none of those qualities. Movie Line's Alison Wilmore didn't pull any punches in her critique of Lautner's performance in Abduction, writing, This may be the first film I've ever seen, where when an actor goes to put his hand thoughtfully on his chin, it's so awkward, I became afraid he'd somehow miss and poke himself in the eye. I just feel like I'm a stranger in my own life. The Village Voice noted, Between chases and born-like bursts of violence, Lautner gets emotional, looking very much like a stranger in his own performance. It seems Lautner may not be ready to solo on box office draw, as Brian Orndorff of Blu-ray.com wrote, at least Tracers isn't asking him to pull off too many dramatic moments. For this one, he was there to move at top speed, leap over walls, and make pained faces when the going got tough. While we can't blame Lautner for hitching his wagon to the creator of Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, he should have trusted his gut instincts when it came to Adam Sandler's The Ridiculous Six, because the movie was a disaster on and off the screen. As Lautner later recalled to Ryan Seacrest, I read the script, and it absolutely terrified me, and the role terrified me. My role is pretty out there. He's a total country bumpkin. So I said to myself, if I just go for this and don't hold back, what could go wrong? This is so much better than the cantaloupe. <laughs> Not only was the movie a critical dumpster fire with a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, it drew even sharper criticism due to insensitive content that made even some of the cast walk off the project. As Variety reported, the actors took offense to racially charged jokes and inaccuracies during the filming of the movie. Netflix attempted to come to the defense of the film, with one executive offering, the movie has ridiculous in the title for a reason, because it is ridiculous. It's a broad satire of Western movies and the stereotypes they popularized, featuring a diverse cast that is not only part of, but in on the joke. Messy career drama aside, it's possible Lautner took a break to focus on his family. On Instagram in August 2018, Lautner posted a shot of himself with his younger sister McKenna, writing, Second Heart Procedure is finally a massive success. Couldn't possibly look up to this little slash not so little girl anymore. You are much braver than I, McKenna. Love you so. According to McKenna's Instagram, she had been battling a rare heart condition that was finally diagnosed and corrected after two surgeries. She and her husband even went on to welcome their son Brecken in 20. 2022. Lautner posts often about his sister, as well as his nephew, and we're happy to see that family bond. Although Lautner's acting career isn't as bustling as it once was, don't count him out just yet. He may just work with comedian Greg Davies again, his co-star in the BBC Three's Cuckoo. Lautner received high praise for his work playing Dale on the comedy series, and this was no small feat. Lautner had big shoes to fill when he replaced Brooklyn Nine-Nine actor Andy Samberg in 2014. I spent 21 years of my life staying physically and spiritually pure so I can be beamed up to space and hang out with sexually curious aliens. Lautner left the show in December 2018, but he made a lasting impression on the cast. Just ask Davies, who said he's open to working with Lautner again down the line. He told Metro in 2017, It's an unlikely friendship. We're doing two more series next year. I get on really well with him. He's a thoroughly decent chap. We're from very different generations and very different body types, so it just shows you can, you, you can bridge those gaps. When director Robert Rodriguez announced his 2020 superhero flick, We Can Be Heroes, fans were thrilled that he would be revisiting the world of 2005's The Adventures of Sharkboy and Lava Girl in 3D. Netflix released promo material that November, with actor Taylor Dooley reprising her role as Lava Girl. Naturally, fans expected to see Lautner as Sharkboy, but he had been replaced by stunt actor J.J. Dashnaw. Rodriguez claimed the film wasn't technically a subsequent installment in a series, and that the new Sharkboy role wouldn't be enough for Lautner to fill. He explained to Decider, I did call Taylor to let him know. There's no dialogue. It's not about the parents. It's not really a sequel. You'd have your face covered the whole time. There wasn't a big enough role for him to do. Rodriguez claimed that after Twilight, there might have been backlash over fans not being able to see Lautner's hunky face. Lautner might not be lighting up the big screen like he used to do, but it's safe to say he's still doing okay. Turns out, being part of a huge franchise can be good to an actor's piggy bank. 
He even made the Forbes Top 10 Highest Paid Actors in Hollywood list in 2012. That same year, the then 19-year-old star treated himself to a Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, which set him back a cool $200,000. And the funds haven't dried up. Lautner's made some solid real estate moves in recent years, including selling his Agora Hills home for over $5 million in 2022 and scooping up a new place for $4 million in the same city. All in, he's estimated to be worth somewhere in the ballpark of $40 million. In October 2018, Lautner went Instagram official with his new girlfriend, Taylor Dome, best known as Tay, and it wasn't long before things got serious. In February 2019, Tay posted to Instagram for Lautner's 27th birthday, to the man with the sweetest heart, happy birthday, day by day, you amaze me. The love, humility, and grace you radiate never goes unnoticed. Every day with you is an adventure. The two Taylors were introduced by Lautner's sister, McKenna, as Lautner explained to people. And McKenna picked up the phone and called me and said, dude, I found your future wife. You need to meet this girl. The couple finally put a ring on it in November 2021. Speaking to Access Hollywood in January 2022, Lautner revealed that he knew Tay was the one almost immediately, adding, She's a fantastic woman. Um, and I'm, I'm very lucky that she chose me. Lautner also joked about the fact that once they were married, Tay would also be called Taylor Lautner. It's gonna get very confusing up in here. The soon-to-be-minted Taylor Lautners didn't waste any time in getting married, making it official on November 11, 2022, at a winery in Southern California. As Lautner told British Vogue, it couldn't have been more perfect. I could have been anywhere marrying my best friend and the love of my life, but the setting of the ceremony definitely made the whole thing feel surreal. Tay wore a jaw-dropping gown by Winnie Couture, and Lautner wore custom Dolce & Gabbana. Then they followed up their big day with a romantic honeymoon in Mexico and got matching wedding day tattoos, which we got to take a peek at on Instagram. The Twilight Saga was an international sensation, but that massive fame wasn't without its downside. As Lautner recalled on Today, the pressure got to be so much that he even avoided going out in public for years. The spotlight also wasn't easy on the dynamic between him and Robert Pattinson. When Lautner was asked whether Twilight Mania affected his friendship with his co-star, he claimed he would be lying if he said no. Telling the Toast podcast, it definitely impacted his own perspective. The worst part? Having, like, thousands of screaming fans either take your side or right. the other guy's side. Right. But as the two actors navigated newfound celebrity, in addition to the ongoing Jacob versus Edward battle, they kept it professional. Lautner added, There wasn't a competitiveness between in me real and Rob. Life. It was a little bizarre, the, like, competitiveness. Yeah. During the Twilight era, Lautner was also subjected to an enormous amount of body shaming. As he told Access Hollywood in February 2023, It was tough when you start putting on a little weight and don't look like you did this huge franchise where you were 17 and recalling that for the movie he spent most of his day in the gym quote killing himself he admitted it was embarrassing like seeing all the photos and having people trash you the actor also revealed that he began experiencing his own disappointment over the way he looked he shared a feeling of guilt regarding the fans recalling having so many people tell me how inspiring i was to them and looking at myself in the mirror and not looking like that anymore. Fortunately, it sounds like Lautner has found a way to heal from the pain he experienced in front of the public eye. As he explained on The Squeeze, I've gotten healthy again, but I think in order to get my body physically healthy, it took my mind getting healthy first. While he hopes to encourage other men to see themselves in a positive light, he advises fans as well as his close friends, Don't find happiness in what you want your body to look like. Along with the realities of fame, Lautner has also been opening up about his mental health. In February 2023, the actor and his wife launched their podcast, The Squeeze. And yes, there is a lemon theme. As the show's Instagram account notes, host Tay Lautner's introduction to mental health was at a young age, witnessing friends and family suffer in ways she couldn't fully understand. She started a nursing career in the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic and has been struggling with her own depression, anxiety, and PTSD ever since. Lautner's very public experience with body shaming also started him on his own journey with mental health. As he shared on the show, Your body can look unbelievable. You can be ripped, shredded, whatever. You can lose weight. You can put on muscle. Affirming that true health begins on the inside and isn't all about what you see in the mirror, he said, If you're not healthy mentally, then that's all for nothing because that can, that can work against you. 
taking on the role of Jacob Black in the Twilight series was certainly not without its negative aspects. But even so, it doesn't appear that Lautner is totally opposed to returning to the franchise. It seems that if the opportunity presented itself, he would seriously consider once again shapeshifting into the character that made him a worldwide star. In August 2022, Lautner told E! News, he's a good character that is easy to love, so I would never say no to that. Doesn't he own a shirt? As for where he thinks his character ended up after the events of Breaking Dawn Part 2, Lautner theorized, happy ever after with Renesmee, because that's where I left off. He's a pretty loyal dude. But Lautner was also quick to note that the grueling training that was required to play Jacob isn't something he would be thrilled to jump back into. He recalled with the outlet, the body was great for the role, but the amount of the working out and discipline and food that went into it, not fond memories. It's tough because when I was 17, 18, 19 years old, I couldn't do any cardio because had to just put on as much muscle as possible. If he were to return to the franchise in the future, Lautner says he would adopt a different strategy. He explained, I would prefer just to be trim and healthy, you know? Definitely not a Jacob Blackbody. One of the reasons Lautner hasn't been acting as much may be because he's dedicated himself to charity and advocacy work. In August 2022, the actor threw his support behind Hill's pet nutrition and the Clear the Shelters campaign, which is close to his heart, having adopted dogs himself. While his wife Tay had already adopted her dog Lily, the pair soon chose to adopt another shelter dog, Remy, together. Speaking to Parade, the star explained, I would just say from my personal experience, Remy and Lily have changed my life so much for the better. I don't know what I would do without them. And if anybody out there feels like they're ready to be a pet parent, I'd say go look at your local shelters. Lautner also revealed the satisfaction he's gotten from adopting a pet who desperately needed a home. As he shared with the outlet, Remy is the happiest dog in the world, and you just, like, can sense how thankful they are. That, for me, is by far the most rewarding part, just feeling from her how much she loves us and how much she loves this life. And honestly, it makes me want to live more like that. Lautner may have taken a step back from the Hollywood machine, but it's clear that he's developed many passions outside of acting, all of which may be bringing him even more joy and fulfillment than ever. If you or someone you know needs help with mental health, please contact the Crisis Text Line by texting HOME to 741-741, call the National Alliance on Mental Illness Helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI, that's 1-800-950-6264, or visit the National Institute of Mental Health website.